Hello everybody. Um, I hope this Facebook Live, whenever you decide to watch it, finds you doing pretty well. Um, we have kind of an intense energy up right now with everything that's happening with the election and the virus and so many other things that are at play. And so I wanted to come online today to talk with you a little bit about how to kind of manage your energy field over the next couple of days. But before I get into that, um, there's a couple of shout outs that I just want to give because um, today is my eight year anniversary, wedding anniversary with my beautiful husband. And what a <laughs> crazy day we have to have an anniversary today, but happy anniversary, babe. And um, it's also um, the day that my um, father-in-law passed away uh, several years ago. And so I'm celebrating him and missing him today. So it's a bit emotional for me today, separate from what's happening in the collective. But just wanted to call out to two of them, um, the special, special people in my life and that have been in my life. So... Anyways, back to what I want to share with you today. Hey, Mimi. Hey, Ezra. Um, it's a little intense out there. <laughs> there is um, so much fear up in the collective right now. And what I'm noticing is it's triggering for people in really interesting ways. And, um, you know, anytime we have a lot of fear in the collective, if you're an empath or you're a sensitive or you're on the spiritual path and you tend to be pretty connected to what's happening, you're going to pick up on the energies that are at play out in the world. And we don't always know that that's happening because the mind likes to make it about us and not about what's happening out there. It has this very tricky way of when we pick up fear energy or grief energy from someone else, making it feel like it's our energy that we're working through and our process, our own mental body stuff and stories that we're working through. But oftentimes what I notice happening is that when we have a lot of fear outside in the collective happening around us, we start to have our own fear responses get triggered. And sometimes that looks like um, nightmares. I had a really weird nightmare last night that felt very real. Um, my husband had one the night before and I had to like hold space for him as he was moving through it. And um, it may be old fears that you haven't felt in a while coming to the surface. Um, things like, you know, I've had a couple of clients reach out to me that some old fears about driving in their car on the highway has come back. And just weird things that maybe you haven't felt in a while are coming to the surface to be cleared. Because when we get triggered by what's happening out in the collective, we have an opportunity to heal something that's happening on the inside for us. Because if we don't have fear in our body and we're not holding fear as a response in our body, what's happening out in the collective can't actually trigger us. And so the fear response that we're all feeling is, is very intense for some of us and less intense for others, depending on the work that you've done around fear itself. And, you know, fear is generated oftentimes from the root chakra. And I say generated because it kind of almost comes in and takes over. And I actually just taught a whole class to my level three students last night on fear. So perfect timing. And, you know, one of the things that I mentioned to them is that when we move from third dimensional reality to fifth dimensional reality, we don't take fear with us. Fear and safety and all of these kind of defensive things don't exist in the fifth dimensional reality. And even though we have access to that reality now, we're not fully living in it, right? We kind of dip our toe in it and then we step in and step out. And so if you've been following me for a while, I talk a lot about the different timelines that we're on. We have two kind of, not just two, but we have many timelines happening at the same time, but they're kind of in two different camps because we're moving through more duality. And one camp is going to move through this process of ascension through a lot of external factors and a lot of um, peak experiences in their physical life. And another camp is going to move through it in a more spiritual way with a lot of internal work and change and growth that's going to happen. And sometimes it's a combination of those two things that happens as well. But I digress. When we come back into the root chakra and what I want to tell you about the root chakra the fear response that exists in the root chakra is conditioned based on the things that you have experienced in your lifetime here on earth and many other lifetimes that you've experienced where we've moved through big times of change. 
And so some of you might be having very catastrophic thoughts coming up. And that's because these lifetimes where we've been on this ascension path and it really hasn't succeeded are coming up to be healed and cleared as well. So we're doing a ton of work this month and throughout the month of November to heal and release a lot of third dimensional constructs within us. And that is being um, mirrored in the stage, the main stage out there in the world where there's third dimensional systems that are going through a bit of an upheaval right now and have been since March and really actually since before that. But this election is just another example of duality playing out, right? I don't know how many people have told me that um, they have a particular leaning one way or the other, but they also have this conflict where there's some things that um, they feel about one camp in terms of the campaign feels aligned and some things about the other, and they feel kind of bad even saying that because there's some conflict there. That's actually good conflict, right? We're not meant to pick from two choices. We are meant to pick from something that is unified. And unfortunately, in our country, we don't have that unification um, party, if you will, available to us right now. We don't have a way to step into unification. And so what may happen is we might have four more years of what has already happened, or the pendulum might swing very quickly in the opposite direction towards community, which is what that party represents. And we might have some time in the next four years of experiencing what it looks like to be in community rather than autonomy, which is what we've had for the last four years. And that seems very neutral when I say it, because I've done a lot of work to be pretty neutral to whatever happens. Right? I know that whatever comes to pass in this election, that I don't need to be in fear of it because um, this train of ascension has already left the station. And I have a deep level of trust that no matter what happens, that the things that need to occur for the systems to break down and us to continue to rise into the fifth dimensional consciousness, that that's going to continue to happen no matter what happens at the top of the house. Because so much has changed on an individual level for each of us already. There needed to be this, this pandemic in order to shake up so much um, unrest within us, so much trauma within us, so much needed to be healed within us on an individual level. And that's already taking place. And that train is not stopping. Honestly, whatever happens in the election, it's going to continue to push us to grow because there's going to be some good and some bad with whoever wins. And so I tell you all of that so that you can start to pull back your fear response from the collective and what's happening for everybody out there and look at what's getting triggered for you. Because the only way that you're going to step out of fear response and um, step out of this fear zone that many people are in right now is if you do your own internal inner work. Right? And so when you do that own, your own internal inner work, it's saying, okay, there's some fearful thoughts happening for those around me. I don't have those same fearful thoughts, but there's fear being triggered for me. What is up for me to be healed? And quite honestly, what I'm seeing for most people when I kind of dive into their root chakras and do energy work right now is they're afraid of dying. That is a huge fear that so many people carry all the time because um, we don't want to not be here, right? Even though it's really hard to be here, we don't want to suffer. We don't want to not be here. And, you know, I practiced yoga for a really long time and taught yoga for a while. And they say that the practice of yoga is the practice of dying, right? It's, it's practicing for the moment that you're going to pass over so that you can take very little karma with you and you can come back in in a higher plane of existence. And I think that's what our lives are all about here. Right? We're here to do our own inner work, to move through lessons, to learn, to grow, to expand, and you know, to really prepare for that exit so that when we come back again, we can come in at a higher plane of existence. And so when I talk about death and dying, you know, that is a huge theme as we've just come out of October. That was a big theme of October of letting go. And so some of us are just now clearing out the energy that got stirred up in October, where we were clearing out some things around our identity, our lives, our relationships, and things that needed to be let go of. So you might find some deep fears of letting go of death, 
of, um, you know, worried about what's going to happen to uh, the ones that you love. Maybe you have some people in some marginalized groups that you're worried about. Um, all of those are valid fears to come to the surface, but make sure that you're not processing for everybody else and not for you. You know, um, we have to have a, ba a balance between being in our own energy field and doing our own inner work and connecting with the community. And when those two things come into balance, we have unity within and without. And so a couple of tips to just help you navigate. Um, first thing, get outside, get grounded, get your feet on the earth, barefoot if possible. I know it's cold in some places, but if you can do that, connect to Mother Gaia. There's an energy center about 18 inches below your, your feet called the Earth Star Chakra. And when you're in trauma response or fear response, it literally gets pulled up into right between your feet, kind of right in the middle between your feet. That needs to be dropped down 18 inches into the earth. And you can do that very simply by focusing on a ball of energy 18 inches below your feet in the earth and just breathing into that. And imagining that ball of energy growing roots down into the center of the planet, allowing your entire energy body to be grounded with that one energy center below your feet. So that's a beautiful way to begin a practice if you don't have a practice of grounding, um, is connecting with that energy uh, center below the feet. If you've never connected with it before, it's probably going to need to be activated. So you're going to have to focus and bring light to it and then grow those connections down into the earth. Another really practical tip is to do something creative with your hands, do some movement, do some breath, do something to clear the energy out of the body. It may be hard for you to meditate right now. That's okay. Sometimes when there's a lot of stuff happening in the collective, we have a hard time meditating because our mental body doesn't want to disconnect from what's going on out there. And so do something that's a moving meditation for you, coloring, um, creative pursuits of drawing, painting, singing has been a big one for me recently. Anything that you can do to get that energy out and moving, dance, right, music, drumming, anything that you can do to get that energy out and moving will be helpful. <clears throat> If you do want to meditate right now, a really beautiful meditation practice is to connect to your emotional body and start to lessen the impact that the emotional body is having on your being. And what I mean by that is the sacral chakra, the low belly, that is your emotional body center. And you can place a hand on your low belly, you can't see me, but I'm doing it right now, and then a hand on your heart. And you can breathe those two energy centers into one another meaning you're going to pull light and breath into the heart chakra. And we can all do this together now, breathing into the heart. And then you're going to exhale and push that light and breath down to the sacral chakra, the low belly, just below the belly button. And then you're going to breathe into that sacral chakra, fill it with light. And exhale up to the heart center. And what you're doing here is connecting with your emotional body, which lives in your sacral chakra, to your heart center where you can feel what is present for you. <clears throat> I will tell you, sometimes I do this practice and emotion comes up. There might be tears that come up and that's good, right? We need to get that energy out some way. Crying is one of the most beautiful forms of purging that can be uh, utilized to clear that energy. You may laugh, you um, may want to scream in anger. Whatever comes up for you is what needs to be released. So don't suppress it, feel it, let it come up. And I promise after you do this exercise, <clears throat> you're going to feel better. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel lighter. There's going to be some space in your energy body so that you can start to fill it with what you want, which is joy and love and ease and peace. And so those simple practices of opening the earth star chakra below the feet, doing some movement or some creative work, and breathing into those two energy centers will help you carry yourself through the next couple of weeks. And yes, I did say a couple of weeks. I don't believe that we're going to know exactly what's happening tonight. And so if you need to take a media blackout until Friday and get off of social media and get out of the news for your own sanity, do that. 
There will be plenty of people in your life, I'm sure, that will tell you what's happening if you want to ask them. So take care of yourselves now. Take care of yourselves now. We have a lot of healing available to us, but if we are in trauma response, we can't heal and let go of, any, of anything. And so be really present and do your inner work right now. This is a beautiful time to draw more light onto the planet, but we can only do that when we have cleared out anything that's standing in our way within our bodies. So um, just a few little tips. My energy update is posted on my Facebook page. You can probably scroll up or scroll down below this video and find it with the three themes that we have this month. And I have a very important healing circle taking place next Wednesday, November 11th from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be focused on connecting with our home frequency <clears throat> and our home connection of our star brothers and sisters, which is really us reaffirming our choice and choosing to be here. It's called Embracing Your Earth Mission. And it's all about those of us that feel unique and feel um, like we don't fit in and don't really know why we're here, but we're actually here to be doing this work right now. And it's about affirming that choice and expanding that, that mission here on Earth. So if you're interested, I'll put the link in the comments. And <clears throat> certainly I have some openings next week for sessions. If you need some extra support, I'll put that link here in the comments as well. But uh, comment back and let me know how this was for you. Um, and uh, if you learned anything, if you have any ahas or any just really want to be heard and what you're feeling, you're welcome to comment that too. I love you all and I hope you have a beautiful day and um, take care of yourselves.